Hey, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to Pops Movie Dungeon. I am back with another review from the dungeon. And this one here is going to be a little bit different. This was actually a recommendation. This is a recommendation from my friend, Allie. She reached out to me on Instagram. She's a big supporter of the channel. She's always in our live streams. Um, always some really good back and forth. But this is the movie that she watched. She really enjoyed. Um, it's, the main star of this movie is a guy named Richard Brake. Now, Richard Brake's been in a lot of stuff, whatever. And I know that she's a fan of his. I think she recently met him in a convention. And after watching this, um, she reached out to me and said she would love for me to do a review on it. So, Allie, thank you so much for the recommendation. And if anybody else has any recommendations of stuff that you would like me to watch and review on the channel, by all means, reach out to me on Instagram. You can leave a comment down below in this video. Um, all my information will be in the description of the video, how you can get in touch with me. But um, yeah, this is going to be my first recommendation um, for a review, so I'm pretty excited to check this out and give my thoughts on it. So as soon as this is over with, I will be back to give my honest reviews right after watching the movie. Go check it out. Let me know what you think. Please let me know down below if you've seen this, if you're a fan, if you're not a fan. And once again, Allie, thank you for the recommendation. I'll be back as soon as I'm done watching. Bedtime. No! Just you see the keys? Yeah, I'll take them. Okay, I'll take them. Yeah, I'll Okay, so I just finished watching The Dare, a movie that came out in, in 2019, directed by Giles Anderson and written by Giles Anderson and Johnny Grant. Now, Giles Anderson and Johnny Grant, they also got a podcast called The Filmmaker's Podcast. I'll try to link that down below. I've never seen the podcast, but after watching this movie, I definitely want to check it out. This movie was really well done. Let's just say that if if, um, if you're a fan of movies like Saul, stuff like that, whatever, this movie's going to be kind of right up your alley, I think. There's a lot of really good body horror in this, um, a lot of good gore effects. There's some a couple things in this movie that are that I'm never going to forget. There's one thing. I, first off, I got a really big fear of spiders. I'm going to try not to spoil anything in this. If I see I'm going to get in spoiled territory a little bit later in the review, I'll be sure to let you know. But um, there's one scene in this movie that has to do with spiders. That's all I'm going to say. I got a fear of spiders, and let's just say that I don't have to turn my head away from the screen very often, but this was fucked up. Um, it's the one thing, if somebody mentions this movie 10 years from now, it is definitely the one thing that um, I'm going to remember about this movie. It, um, yeah, it, it fucked with me a little bit. Once you see it, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to give it away. Um, but that alone, if nothing else, is worth checking this movie out just for that one scene. But the movie has a bunch of unknowns, at least unknowns to me. Um, you have Bart Edwards, Richard Short, and the one guy in the movie that I did recognize, his name is Richard Brake. Now, you probably know Richard Brake from, from quite a few other things. Um, he was in Batman Begins. He was in Hannibal Rising. He, um, he had a couple episodes on Game of Thrones, whatever, as the Night King. He's done a lot of shit with Rob Zombie, whatever. He was in Halloween 2. Um, he was in 31. He was in 3 from Hell, just off the top of my head. But he's got a long filmography, and Richard Brake is great. He does a great job in this movie. Um, the character he plays, I mean, he, he does just what he's supposed to do. He's creepy as hell. He's overbearing. He's scary. 
Um, Richard Brake's great, and, and he will not disappoint. If you're a fan of Richard Brake, that's another reason why you need to check this movie out. You have a guy played by Bart Edwards. His character's name is Jay. He's home with his wife and two small daughters. You can tell he travels a lot, that um, he's never home very much you know, because of work. And you know his wife is having some issues with that. You know his daughters are missing him. You know it's just a typical night at home. He's putting his daughters to bed, getting them ready for you know. Everybody's kind of settling in for the night, and it takes about two minutes for this movie to get started. Get two of the coolest shots in the movie right there in the beginning. I was invested right away. So basically, a guy breaks in the house. They get attacked, and whenever um whenever Jay whenever Jay wakes up, he wakes up in a dungeon chained up with three other strangers. Each one's chained up. One guy's bloody as hell, beat to death just about. His mouth sewed shut. You have another lady in the room and another guy in the room. You can tell they've been there for a while. They've already, you know, they're bloody as hell. They look like they're defeated. They have no fight left in them. They're just kind of giving up. He wakes up freaking the hell out. And they keep trying to tell him, calm down. You're only going to make it worse. He's wondering what happened to his wife and kids. Kind of freaking out, as you could imagine. Shortly thereafter, you meet the bad guy. The guy that comes in, whatever. He's, he's a big, buff, Tom Hardy-looking bitch. Wearing a mask, you know, I don't know if it's made out of human skin, made out of pig skin, but you see him on the poster. It's a mask kind of in the vein of like maybe a Texas Chainsaw Mask or something like that. He comes in and basically he will pick somebody in the room to do something heinous as hell to somebody else in the room. He's making them do shit to each other. So it's really hard to talk about the rest of this movie without giving away spoilers. So I'm going to try to be as vague as I can. The rest of the movie, let's just say that you, you pretty much got three different timelines. Okay, you're going to have what's going on inside the dungeon with the people that are trying to get out. You're going to have this group of kids from back in the day that are doing all kind of all kind of heinous shit that follows that storyline. And it's also going to be a storyline about what happened and how this guy that is torturing these people in this dungeon came to be. And so the way they kind of merge these three storylines together and the, the very end, you kind of get the reveals of, of how everything happened and why everything's happening. I thought they did a really good job with that. There is a couple, um, a couple holes in the story I thought was a little crazy, a little silly or whatever. The main thing to me, and this really doesn't give anything away if you hadn't watched the movie, but let's just say that somebody has got a horseshoe burn on their hand. It's like a brand. It looks like a horseshoe. And you hear the backstory of how this how this kid, whatever, got this horseshoe on his hand. He's sitting in front of a camper talking to this girl. And he's about maybe, I don't know, 10 years old, something like that. And you hear his parents fighting inside the camper. They, it's, it's, I mean, it's a camper. It's like a hubble in the middle of fucking nowhere on like a dirt lot. You can tell they ain't got a, a damn pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. But this kid says that after his parents killed his horse. Now, you mean to tell me these people live in a fucking camper, but they got a horse? It didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, whatever, how this kid's going to have a horse to start with. But supposedly his parents killed his horse. He branded himself with a horseshoe in honor of his horse or whatever. That right there was probably the dumbest part of the whole movie. It's just a minor gripe that I have. You know, there's a couple other little nitpicky things I could bring up about the movie that I thought was a little silly. But other than that, whatever, I thought the story was, was told very well. Like I said, there's three different timelines. They merge the three timelines together to you finally find out what's going on completely. And then, of course, you have the, all the crazy shit that happens at the end. But overall, they did a really, really good job. Like I said, the entire movie, it's got a short run time. It's like an hour and 37 minutes. You know, so it's a really short investment um, on your time. But I feel like you guys are going to enjoy this. The pacing of this movie was great. Whatever, it moved right along. I was never bored during the entire movie. I was invested in the characters. I was invested to see what was going to happen. I thought the ending was fantastic. Um, yeah, like I said, the, other than just your regular horror tropes, whatever, you know, you got a chance to kill the killer. You, know, you, bang, you bang their ass in the head. They're laying there on the ground. Go ahead and kill them, but instead you try to get away. Knowing they're not dead, they're just knocked out. You know, if I'm in this situation, I got the killer on the ground, he ain't getting back up. But just shit like that, just horror tropes, you're going to see in most horror movies. But this movie here does it three or four times at the end, and it kind of drives me crazy. Other than that, I really have no other gripes about the movie. I had a really good time with it. There was some crazy shit in this movie. And you guys let me know down below if you watch this. Let me know about that spider scene, what you thought about that. Uh, I thought it was pretty unique. But Ali, once again, thank you for recommending this movie. I had a great time watching this. But thanks, everybody, for checking this out. And I'll be back really soon with some more reviews from the dungeon.